Kirkley with that report. The Australian Outback has been featured in many films, from Jeddah to Walkabout, even Priscilla Queen of the Desert and Baz Luhrmann's Australia. But many critics consider Wake in Fright to be one of the best, despite its failure at the Australian box office when it was released in 1971. A brutal and confronting portrayal of Aussie mateship and the bush, Wake in Fright had been lost to audiences for decades, until a chance discovery of the film in America has led to its digital restoration. Rebecca Bailey reports on the reawakening and re-release of a classic. It's a classic Australian film which has achieved cult status, yet relatively few Australians have ever seen it. It's an embarrassed, cultural, inadvertent step in a, in a direction at cultural recognition. A recognition of, if you like, the ugly Australian, if you like the, you know, but a recognition of ourselves. Fox. After decades in oblivion, Wake in Fright has been digitally restored and is set to be re-released, ensuring it's seen by a whole new generation. Hey, I hit him! <laughs> hey, John, where are you going? I hit him! Once you've seen it, it stays with you forever. Mate, they're all mangy out here. It's actually a really powerful story. It was well produced at the time. It's got some amazing uh, Australian outback scenes. But it's also grim, it's brutal, it's got a horrible, horrible um, aspect to it about the kind of the, the mean mateship of the outback. <laughs> Based on the novel by Kenneth Cook, Wake in Fright is about one man's descent into hell. Played by English actor Gary Bond, John Grant arrives in a fictional outback town, a genteel school teacher, but leaves it corrupted and crazed. It's frightening. This is a horror story as far as I'm concerned. It could be, or should be regarded, that's what I think, as one of the best films ever made in this country. Jack Crawford. His name, of course, Chips Rafferty. What about another beer? He had just completed this role in Wake in Fright, considered by many critics to be his best, when he died suddenly in May. Wake in Fright features some of Australia's finest actors. It was Chips Rafferty's final film, Jack Thompson's first. Uh, you knew to the ever, agent? Yes. Yes. My memories are of uh, one of the most exciting filmmaking experiences of my life. How long before a production like this can be called Australian? Made in 1970 and directed by Canadian Ted Kotcheff, the Australian-American co-production was spurned by Australian audiences at the time. People walked out of it saying, that is not us. And we all thought we spoke like that, really. We didn't actually have an Australian accent, and there was none of that sort of brutality. There was none of that harshness and madness. That, of course, is very much a part of our lives. Following the controversy surrounding its release, Wake in Fright failed at the Australian box office and enjoyed just one airing on commercial television in the 1980s. Wake in Fright is not just another movie for entertainment, it's a movie which almost holds a mirror up to life and it could be a mirror up to your life, it could be a mirror up to mine. There have been many fine films made here, but Wake in Fright has an edge to it that I think even modern critics and cinema audiences will appreciate. You know, I've never seen the image looking this good before. Tony uh, Buckley edited Wake in Fright and for the past decade it's been his mission to bring the film back to the cinema. The problem was there wasn't a good enough print known to exist. That's better. After years of detective work, Tony Buckley tracked down a copy of the film lying forgotten in a Pittsburgh film vault, filed under its American title Outback. He found it just in time. There were 200 cans of negative and positive film of Wake and Fright marked for destruction. So we're very, very lucky. It was a very close shave. 
These ones are rusted and hideous. And when they first arrive, you think, oh, you know, my God, what's going to be happening inside? But the condition inside is far better than the outside. So getting the, the National Film and Sound Archive's in, chief curator, Meg Labram, says Wake in Fright is an important part of Australia's film heritage, which deserves to be saved. I'm going to be very interested to see how a 21st century Australian audience is going to respond because I absolutely believe it's a good film, it's a good watchable film and the story that it tells hasn't really dated that much. What it's lacking is, is the contrast. If you look at that it's just completely flat, it's just lost it, it's, it's, there's just nothing left in the negative whereas if you actually look at that then you think okay well, wow the contrast is there, the colours there um, and that the picture now has a bit of life to it. Anthos Simon to from Deluxe Australia has had the painstaking job of restoring the film frame by frame. Process, which is it's a, the first time this groundbreaking digital technology do has been used to restore an Australian feature <laughs> film. If the traditional path gives you, say, a 5 out of 10 result, digital is, is clearly a 10 out of 10. It's, it's that much better. What's wrong with you, you bastard? Why don't you come and drink with me? I just brought you 50 mils and eat and dust and you won't drink with me. Look, What's wrong with you? What's the matter with you people, huh? You sponge on you, you burn your house down, murder your wife, rape your child, that's all right. Don't have a drink with you, don't have a flaming bloody drink with you, that's a criminal offence. For those who have brought Wake and Fright back from the brink, its cinema and DVD release later this year will mean the classic film is never lost on the scrap heap again. Now I can breathe a sigh of relief that it's in safe hands. When you see it, you do see one of the seminal films in the uh, Renaissance of an Australian film industry. You're mad, you bastard. You mad, you bastard. The fully restored Wake in Fright will have its Australian cinema premiere at the, Austra at the Sydney Film Festival in June. And Rebecca Bailey had that report. Acclaimed as one of Australia's greatest 20th century